Did you see recently that, uh, I don't know if it's still the case, but Netflix did a nosedive in stock prices? What didn't do a nosedive in stock prices? But Netflix one was astronomical, apparently. Like it, Let me I mean, I don't know what it's like now, but like, um, it, it was a very, very steep uh, stock price. Um, oh man, it is, it's insane. So it used to be 650 and now it's 177. Mm. It's like minus 75%. Any theory as to why? It used to be 690, not 650. That's crazy. I have a few theories as to why that happened. Do you have any theories? So my theories would be a bit half-baked because I'm not a consumer of their product. I never watch these movies. But mm -hmm. if I had to guess, and these are just like complaints I've heard from my friends, it's that they're too woke where they they kind of like push their whole LGBT, black people, minorities thing so much that it goes from essentially being a show about entertainment to being a show about pushing LGBT. Mm -hmm. so for example, like I, I just I told you, right? I'm reading some science fiction. I'm reading this book called The Foundation Trilogy, and I'm on the third book. And in this book, this book has apparently been adapted to some TV show. And in the TV show, they made half the characters who were like men, women. Like that makes no sense. Like a lot of the developed characters, right. they were men, and they kind of like changed the entire thing and they made these characters like black women or like whatever you know mm -hmm. and i have nothing against black people in general but what the hell like the book says the guy is like a guy so why are you changing it to be a woman that makes no sense to me and i would say a lot of the stuff is accumulating and is why netflix is declining but then again this is a half big theory because i'm not a consumer of their drug but tell me um that that is one of the things, Harsh, where uh, you don't want to mess with the content too much, where you're fiddling too much with a certain ideologies and planting it in there. So I do think that's one of the reasons. Another reason is nowadays more people are offering streaming services. I mean, there's HBO, there's Hulu, uh, there's Disney Plus, right? Mm -hmm. So th so that's another thing. Before, like Netflix was the head honcho in Hey, Harsh is echoing. It is one sec. How about now? Um, so that's uh, somewhat good, but whatever. Um, Wait, let me try a headphone just a sec. Okay. Why does it happen after a certain amount of time? It <laughs> wasn't know. happening earlier. Damn it. Okay, now it won't happen because I'm on headphones. Speak. Okay, okay. so nowadays there's more streaming services, so there's some competition that's being taken away. Another thing um, was the whole concept of binging, where before uh, it was seen as a good thing. Uh, do you know what binging is? Um, spending your entire day watching some TV show like a complete retard. Yeah, <laughs> but they became, like that was their unique uh, selling point. They're like, this new series we're releasing the whole thing at once and you get to enjoy it um but the thing is th there was some research that said that when you binge a show versus when you have to wait week by week for the new episode to release for binging uh the enjoyment levels are lower than you having to wait and this was very counterintuitive because people were thinking why like we're in this hyper uh, target like speed culture well, why is the data saying that people don't like binging uh, or they reduce their enjoyment for it because a lot of people who consume content, they do it for social activities. Uh, so they want to, you know, meet up the next week and be, you know, discuss the plot. Like, can you believe this certain character died? But you can't do that when someone is binging because one person watched the whole thing and the other person is still on episode two. So the social part gets ruined. So I think there's a few different of variables that added up and just hit them at once, which led to the nose dive. Interesting. I heard they were also adding advertising, right? Yeah, but this was something that they were vehemently against before. 
And that was one of their unique selling points where you could watch the entire thing without any advertisement. That's one of the reasons I hate Hulu because it's like all these advertisements and you gotta, you can't skip it or anything. But with so Netflix, what's the point? It's like TV then. If you have to watch ads, why are you paying for this? Yeah, and it, it doesn't help that like you know the CEO like took a harsh stance against it. And I get it; times change, and you may have to adjust even on certain core philosophies. But it's like that's one thing, man. Another thing is harsh. They're releasing so much content where um, there's not enough promotion behind the content. Where that can be another issue as well. Like sometimes a new season will be released, and I'm like, I didn't even know it was out because there's a few things that do matter. So a lot of the times, like you don't know when a new content piece is out. You know, I think you know what a good business can be for someone who's really rich. Someone mm-hmm. who's really rich can actually buy out all of these companies. Okay, Hulu, Netflix, whatever you know, all these video streaming services that are popular. Mm-hmm. and then make like a combined subscription or they could get together and make a combined subscription that you buy the subscription you get everything and then depending on whatever documentary or movie you're watching like a part of a subscription would go to like the person who is distributing it yeah i could see that i think the big reason why like the, what's happening right now is that if you if you are an avid consumer of these drugs then you have to have a subscription to all of the drug dealers that you need to be also on Netflix also on Hulu whatever whatever and instead of it being like a 10 dollar drug service it's like a 50 or 100 dollar a month drug service mm-hmm. so you might as well just not watch it or like you will then pick and choose okay i only need one and i think that's kind of why these services might be losing money Yeah, I mean this seems like one of those industries where we have to see if competition leads to more innovation or if it just leads to um bursts of profitability but not any long-term returns. Because the thing is harsh, like there some people will choose a streaming service just because it has their favorite show on there. Like a lot of people will just get HBO because they could watch Game of Thrones there. But then it's like, oh, I don't really like the other shows too much, but I like Game of Thrones. And and I could see your idea working where they're all under one umbrella. Um, I know bootleggers know are doing that now. In India, if you get your internet connection from many companies, you get a subscription to all of these for free. Mm-hmm. So if you buy a high speed internet connection, you get like Reliance. What is it called? Like Reliance um, Video, and you get Amazon Prime and Netflix and Hulu, and all of them with their internet connection for free. Okay. You don't have to pay for them like they come with the net connection. Oh, okay. That's uh so that's a similar idea of what you're proposing with streaming services? Yeah, like some some way to get them all together. Yeah. It'll be interesting, man, because streaming is like still a relatively new thing. Like before people were uh doing DVD rentals, before that they were doing a uh, cassette tape rentals so streaming is a rather new platform or a new methodology yeah i would say it kind of killed piracy where earlier people would pirate movies and songs and now no one does mm-hmm. because they can just watch it from you know the streaming service yeah interestingly the guy who was selling me this internet connection he was selling me that but like so i have a very fast connection i pay like $25 a month for it mm-hmm and um, i get like these services free with it which is like you know netflix whatever whatever and i was telling him okay i'm not going to use netflix i never watch it so how about you pay me to for this internet connection because i'm not going to use all these services and i'll just use the internet look at you businessman <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not amused <laughs> <laughs> but to be frank i do save more money like i say it's for me this internet connection is almost free because mm-hmm. they gave me free amazon prime and a bunch of other things which my other family use so early instead of paying for them separately i get my net for free now yeah and what these streaming services a lot of people use it for different reasons 
like some people they don't watch any of the shows uh, but have you ever heard of the concept netflix and chill i i think it means something like sleeping with the girl like this is like supposed to be like a way of calling her to your house you can sleep with her yeah it's, it's like, like a boutique it's like a informal way of saying this like you want to netflix and chill and so you guys are watching a show and then you know something happens so this guy doesn't use netflix at all throughout their day but they have it as a dating vehicle all right <laughs> <laughs> so that that's what netflix and chill is the remix of that nowadays is called a disney plus and thrust <laughs> <laughs> see that's too raunchy see netflix and chill is netflix and chill okay so you like that one better but the point no, but the, ma- disney the, the thirst one is like too raunchy and kind of like gives away the the you know the context yeah yeah so um so yeah i mean different people use these services for different reasons um uh, with netflix before they weren't too strict on uh, the password sharing nowadays they're about to crack down on it so that could be another thing that you know is playing i wouldn't say a role in their demise uh, they went through something like this earlier in their career um the main focus for them should be like focus on the content hmm i don't know i don't watch the stuff so i can't really comment on it all yeah. i can say is that most people that complain about netflix that i hear about are them complaining about it being too woke yeah i, I mean i could definitely see the woke thing being an issue um but the thing with netflix like if you understand their business model is that they release so much content and there's like let's say from hundreds and hundreds of new shows and stuff being added on like 5 to 10 are like super woke and it leaves it gets the most publicity and now all these other shows are viewed as woke too as some of them like uh, they're not they're not really woke they have great storylines and everything like squid games was a great show but around that same time there's another show where like a man is getting pregnant it's like what, what? so you got yeah so you got to be a little bit more mindful and the show that you're adding on i get it like they have their data they're, they're experimenting um but you got to be a little bit more mindful in that and you can't another problem is that they invest a lot in having like these uh seasons that do good and once they build a lo- loyal following they cancel season 2 or 3 i'm like what are you doing like keep the show going so why did they cancel them they just cancel it i don't know i mean for like internal politics sometimes the people don't want to come back and sometimes they're just like oh it's time for it to go um there's a lot of unique ideas uh i think to revive netflix remember one time we were talking about uh harry potter from the lens of voldemort he mm-hmm. must not be named well with netflix they should like let's say restart the breaking bad series but through jesse's lens like how cool would that be now they could revive that show and revive netflix and the only way you could watch it is through netflix so there's a lot of ideas but it all you boils like down to spin-offs things. right you mean like spin-offs spin-offs yeah spin-offs for already popular shows but they're already doing that aren't they Not like really. there's I like a the stall show for breaking bad and yeah but they they should keep they should do that more rather than releasing so much new content i do some spin-offs of shows that already worked what exactly is netflix's model like do they record on their own or are they more like a contractor where okay you make a show and then you can put it on netflix so is it like somewhat similar to youtube or is both. it more like both so they have um so they get content from other studios that make the shows and they also produce original content i see so, they, so house of cards is it out was, of their hand no if they do um um if they do original content um yeah so so like for house of cards that was one of those shows that were like really good it's original content uh, but unfortunately kevin spacey got you know in some trouble for some illegal stuff but i wonder if they could relaunch the series from a different angle Uh, I don't know if Black Mirror is a a um original but if it is like they could relaunch or release more episodes of that show. I'm just thinking out loud, man. But what I'm trying to say is that uh the sky is the limit for these sort of companies. It's just um they need to they need to fine tune a little bit more. And I get it cuz they're 
pretty much learning with us at the moment because there was never streaming before. So they're learning this new landscape in real time. Interesting. I I think that we're missing a big piece of the puzzle in this discussion is how much money does a show actually make? That's a good question. Um, Because if the show is making a lot of money, then all of these things make sense. But if producing more shows doesn't actually make that much money, that is like the money is actually made by shows that have already been produced, like a cash cow, then yeah, I can see why they might not be producing too much and relying more on, say, external studios to produce the show. So I'm not sure how much money they're making. And certain shows have like verticals that can expand. Like Stranger Things, like that's a show that you can uh, make like uh, shirts on. Like people identify with a certain character, so they're like, "Oh, I could buy merchandise with that," um, and y- you could expand into ar- other verticals. While certain other shows, like they don't really, ha- they'll be a great show, but they don't allow it to expand into other verticals. So, I've been very curious about this, Harsh, because you know I just got done reading. Um, one of the co-founders of Netflix's book, um, That Will Never Work by Mark Randolph. And like he basically discusses the whole ideation process of how he got the idea in the first place and his journey from uh, like starting all the way to going public. And, you know, I saw like the origin stories of Netflix. So it's unfortunate to see them going through a tough time right now. Uh, hopefully they can bounce back and focus on the vision, which is the stories not all these woke stuff and all the uh, other noise i don't know maybe it might not be netflix maybe it's going to be a competitor or someone who starts a completely new company mm-hmm. because i think the woke stuff is like an infestation you know like you have to fire all of your staff and hire all new people to get rid of it mm. because it might it isn't a problem of like content it's a problem of people Right, where all of your staff is like filled with woke people, and you can't like change their minds. You have to fire them and hire new people. And at the end of the day, if you do that, it's a new company. So this yeah. is like a decadent culture. You could say it's a like decadent culture, and the ship is sinking. And you're better off starting a new ship than say trying to fix this ship, because the problem is not the ship. The problem is the crew. Interesting. I could see that. There was a period where Amazon was going to buy Netflix. This was in 1998, 99. Uh, but last minute, um, they um, Netflix was like, no, we believe in ourselves. Uh, we don't want to like settle for the price you guys are giving us. Uh, nowadays, it, it's pretty uh, hilarious because Netflix uses Amazon Web Services. You know what? Who AWS does? Is? Everyone uses yeah. Everyone yeah. uses AWS. Yeah, and but, but this is the the catch twenty one. Um, they use Amazon um, Web Services, but Amazon has a streaming platform now too called Amazon Prime. So I wonder how much of the data that they get from Netflix that they use for their own premium content. None. You think none? No, no. So Amazon, AWS is more like an infrastructure service where you can hire servers and everything. Mm-hmm. But I would be really, really, really surprised if they actually like violate their TOS and privacy policy and look over what's stored on your server. Plus, you can prevent them from doing so by 